If you ever leave me, I'd be sad and blue. Don't you ever leave me, I'm so in love with you. The birds in the sky would be sad and lonely if they knew that I lost my... But I know you won't leave me, cause you told me so. I've no intention of letting you go, just as long as you let me know. You won't be bad to me, so the birds in the sky won't be sad and lonely cause they'll know. Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. This is the last of the five Fully Wen fountain pens that Joel Terrell donated for review and to give away. Congratulations to the winners of the previous three pens. Just a reminder, you have until midnight tonight, Pacific Standard Time, May 13th, 2020, to subscribe and put a comment on the fourth Fully Wen pen giveaway, the Fully Wen Orange, in order to be entered in the draw. I've purposely left this particular pen to the last because it's easily the most unusual of the five. This is the Fully Wen 815 and it has some unusual features, including a most interesting tubular nib. So let's take a closer look at this pen and show you how you can win it right now. <laughs> Yes, I know this pen too. This is the Fully Wen 815 Retro with a fascinating tubular style nib. No, but it is interesting. And a really interesting resin. And it posts with a click an interesting clip which is on a spring just like that that's fascinating wow I'm overwhelmed here so that was me unpacking the box from Joel Terrell and seeing the fully win 815 for the first time last March here it is May and I still haven't been out of the house that's okay though I got Plenty to occupy me with all my pens and inks, not to mention the pens arriving on the back of a Chinese turtle. No, not that turtle. Let's take a look at this unusual pen. What I want to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons and some measurements, and then do a writing sample. And stay tuned until after the writing sample, where I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen and explain to you how you can win this very pen. So let's get started. This pen is available from Bobby's Etsy store, Chinese Pen, for $8.50 US. It is also on Bobby's title page for the store. It's very stylish from the outside. This is the silver version and there's also a version available in gold. It is a metal pen, so it has some weight to it. The finish is a brushed metal aluminum but there isn't any texture you can feel. It might actually be just be covered with a uh, some kind of a smooth acrylic because it is very smooth uh, to the touch. It's not like the finish you would feel on a Lamy 2000, for example. The top finial integrates the clip, which looks like it should be hinged or spring-loaded. But upon closer examination, you can see that it... Uh, it butts up hard against that finial cap and so there's nowhere for it to travel even if it was spring-loaded. So there's nowhere for this hinge to travel 
if it was going to pivot. So that's not very practical. So it might not move in this direction very well, but it certainly moves in this direction. If you look closely here, you can see how it, it wobbles in there like that for some unknown reason. But it does move the clip side to side, and maybe you can see it damages the top of the clip as it moves, which is unfortunate. And it always seems to be not straight. You never can get it straight. The cap tapers up slightly to the barrel, which transitions from the cap to the barrel, and this short acrylic section. Now it's advertised as celluloid, but that's not celluloid. That's, uh, that's acrylic resin. It's the cracked ice style resin, and it's got flecks of green, black, and pink in there, and some, uh, some chatoyance to the pink elements. Some of you might like this uh, material combination. As a design aesthetic, I don't for the same reasons I gave in the Fully Went Orange review. However, we shall see later how this section of acrylic can have a practical purpose with this pen. The barrel continues in this brushed aluminum and tapers very, very slightly, about a half a millimeter, uh, to the end finial, which there's a step down there and this little raised rib, which is part of the end finial and part of the capping mechanism for the cap to post. The cap snaps off to reveal a short section which is of the same material as the cap and the barrel and a very short hooded gold plated, well gold colored anyway, tubular nib and plastic feed. There are no markings on the nib itself, but it does have, it's hard for you to see, but there is an F in there on that curved plastic feed, which stands for fine, I would assume. I tried to unscrew or pull that uh, nib and feed out of there, but it just wasn't wanting to budge. It doesn't seem to unscrew. There doesn't seem to be a way to get that nib out of there and I didn't want to uh, exert too much force on it. The inside of the cap has a plastic liner, and at the bottom of there is a brass screw which holds the finial and the, uh, the clip mechanism together. The barrel unscrews from the section, and it's metal on metal threads, and the threads on the inside of the body look brass, and I am assuming that most of the metal in this pen is brass. The bottom of the section has fully when 815 stamped into it. It's very hard to see, but it is fully when 815. The supplied converter is not standard international, but the section will accept Parker and Lamy long cartridges and two Parker short cartridges piggybacked. This converter is functionally identical to a Pen BBS uh, cartridge converter. And this converter has fully WEN branding on it as well. It's easier to read when it's right side up. There we go, fully WEN. And is one of the upscale converters with a little metal um, ring around the nipple, which either excites your pen or it does not. It certainly reinforces that area so it doesn't split. The cap posts securely with a snap, which is really nice, but it makes the pen extremely long in the hand and very, very back heavy. That is, unless you write with a bit of a trick, which I will demonstrate in the writing sample. Unposted, the pen balances in the hand very nicely. That section is rather short, and you can feel that step. But again, I've got a little trick to that that you'll see in the writing sample. Now let's look at some size comparisons. So here we are with the Fully Wen 815 next to a Moonman T1. 
a Faber-Castell loom, a Parker sonnet, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And there we have the five pens posted. You'll note that the 815 is not the longest posted in the, in the five in the list. Uh, the Moonman T1 is still the longest one posted, and is very unwieldy. The uh, Faber-Castell loom posts very securely and very deeply, but not as deeply and securely as both the Sonnet and the Pilot Metropolitan. And of course, this nib is unlike any of these others. These having number fives, that's the number six, and this is... Um, a very small tubular nib. Now we'll look at some uh, measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing sample portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Fully Wen eight one five silver, and it has a fine steel nib. And the ink today is Robert Oster, Astorquiza, Olive. I thought it would match the green flecks in that uh, acrylic section. And here is the, the test card for that color. And here it is with a Rochizuku Chikurin and Gerbin Emerald of Chivor. So this is a fine nib because it has an F on the bottom of the feed, but it's making a line which is somewhere between an F and an M. So it feels like it's on the thicker side of fine, um, close to a medium. Let's check the wetness. Now that's pretty wet as you can see. After I first cleaned out this pen and inked it up, I checked the nib for alignment and the tines were misaligned to the point that they needed adjustment. This uh, proved to be a bit of a challenge as the semi-hooded nib and the tubular nature of it makes it extremely inflexible. I turned the nib on its edge on the paper and rocked it back and forth to try to get the nib tines in alignment. It took quite a bit of uh, gentle pushing to get those uh, tines to be uh, exactly in alignment with each other. I think that the process opened up the tines a bit as well because the pen is now very wet, but it's very stiff even for a steel pen. So that's no pressure at all and that's pushing it and there's no line variation at all. As you can see. Um, so even for a steel nib, this is very stiff. So, as they say, it's like writing with a nail. Or nine of them, even. You don't like how meta this is getting rich? Shut up, Morty. You're 14. You watch videos of people on YouTube reacting to f***ing YouTube. I'll be the judge of when we get too meta. Holy sh Let's listen to it right.
So very, very smooth, very, very wet. It's actually very nice to write with. Reverse writing. It actually writes in reverse very nicely and you get quite a thin line in comparison. So if you want some line variation, you have to turn the nib over. And for some quick writing, Very, very, very nice. No problems with keeping up at all. Which is good because I can't get that at that nib and feed at all to adjust it. Now you may note how I'm gripping this pen. I'm not gripping it on the section down here. I started the writing sample up here with the pen unposted and it, uh, it balances nicely but that section is very small for my hand and I can feel that step on my thumb. So I thought, well, if it unbalances it to post, what if I use that center acrylic section to balance the pen? And now the pen rests with the cap just about at my knuckle and it is forward balanced and my fingers are on a very smooth, very thick um, acrylic section which actually is very nice. And so for the last couple of days, I've been writing with this pen. I've been writing with it in this configuration. So perhaps that's what it was designed for. Um, I'm just going to claim that I just discovered that. America, I did it! Bugs Bunny discovers America! Bugs Bunny! Who's a discovered America? Okay, Chris, you can have the credit. <laughs> No use changing all the history books just for little old me. <laughs> this is the Doug grip for now on, on this pen. Okay, I just invented it. Copyright Doug 2020. Hey, so much fun it should be illegal. By copyright infringement. Ho ho, see you at the game, Joe. Ho ho. Now, what do I like and what do I not like so much about this pen? To start with the likes, I think the overall look of this pen is very sleek. Uh, especially the look of this semi-hooded, gold-colored tubular nib. I'm not surprised Bobby has a nice photo of it on his banner. It's a real eye-catcher. Once I found a grip that worked for me, the pen is very comfortable in the hand. It is a bit heavy, so if you like a little bit of weight to your pen, that's good. And it lays down a very nice, wet, medium, close to medium, line on the page. And it's very smooth. The cap posts with a really nice positive snap. And it is well balanced when you hold it like this. It's also very inexpensive at $8.50 US. What I don't like about it so much is the very stiff nib, which I can't disassemble. I wouldn't know how to remove or replace this nib. The clip on this pen is horrible. It uh, doesn't have any function. Um, and its form factor, well, it's rather attractive in terms of its, its design. But the fact that it doesn't pivot in one direction, but does pivot in the other direction is really frustrating. I also don't particularly like the aesthetic combination of this cracked ice acrylic and the brushed metal. Again, that's a, that's a personal taste thing. And this silver model seems to have some kind of a, a bronze effect just here behind the barrel. I don't know whether it's a defect um, or whether something on that acrylic is bleeding into the, um, the coating on this pen. We're into the metal. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be even all the way around. Like underneath, it doesn't have that bronze look, but up here it does. So there you have it. The Fully Wen 815 Silver. If you'd like to win this pen, simply be a subscriber to my channel and leave a comment below before May 20th, 2020 at midnight Pacific Standard Time. 
As a comment topic, feel free to name any or all of the film, television, and popular culture cutaways I've edited into this review. As always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification of new videos. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.